Vault 11 is one of the darkest, most disturbing vaults in Fallout. Like all other vaults, this one is part of a social experiment by the US government. But the exact nature of the social experiment that takes place in this vault isn't clear at first. When you first enter it, you'll find four human skeletons on the ground, with a 10mm pistol next to them. A terminal nearby contains a tape explaining what happened. It turns out there were five survivors who were able to escape the vault, but four of them were so affected by what happened inside that they committed suicide, but the fifth survivor didn't. He dropped his gun and left. Once you delve deeper into the vault, you'll start getting some clues as to what happened there. You'll find these strange propaganda posters everywhere asking people to vote in the upcoming election. But here's the thing, they're not asking people to vote for who they like, they're asking people to vote for who they don't like. But why? Why would you want your enemies to become overseer? The answer lies in the vault's terminals. You see, whoever becomes overseer must be sacrificed. And if every year the residents of Vault 11 don't offer a sacrifice, it's implied that they will all die. This idea was originally inspired by Shirley Jackson's book, The Lottery. But don't take my word for it, here's Josh Sawyer, the director of Fallout New Vegas. I think Vault 11, I just, I told Eric Fenstermaker, I said, I think it'd be neat if one of these places had a lottery, like a Shirley Jackson's The Lottery sort of feel to it, where you, you know, somebody gets, you know, whoever's the overseer, you don't want to be the overseer because you wind up getting killed or something. To elaborate, The Lottery is a short story about an American village which, like the title implies, holds a lottery every year. But the winner of the lottery gets stoned to death. It's implied in the story that this sacrifice is an attempt to improve corn yields, kind of like in old religious rituals. Now, originally, in Vault 11, the overseer wasn't necessarily the one who had to be sacrificed. They could have literally sacrificed anyone. But you see, the first overseer was the only person aware of the social experiment that took place in this vault. Understandably, people were angry at not being told that they had to sacrifice one of their own each year. And so, as their first sacrifice, they offered up whom they felt deserved it the most, the overseer. And from that point on, started the tradition that whoever would become overseer would also be the one to be sacrificed. Year after year, election after election, the most unpopular person was sacrificed. Eventually, the vault split into a number of voting blocks. These blocks would endorse whom they thought should be sacrificed. The biggest of these blocks was the Justice Block. It had the most members and so was able to heavily influence the result of the election. Therefore, whoever the Justice Block nominated would probably be the one to be sacrificed. And eventually, the Justice Block nominated a man named Nathan Stone, which was a problem because they promised his wife, Catherine Stone, that they wouldn't nominate him if she performed sexual favors for them, which she did, but they nominated her husband anyway. Damn, these guys are assholes. This is why you'll see posters all over the vault saying, I hate Nate. That's the justice block trying to get people to vote for Nathan Stone. And this slogan is actually quite similar to I like Ike, the slogan used during Dwight Eisenhower's presidential campaign. Anyway, as I was saying, even though Catherine Stone performed sexual favors for the higher ups at the justice block, they still nominated her husband, Nathan. And so she went on a rampage and started murdering members of the Justice Block. When it was discovered that she was the one responsible for the murders, she was apprehended and people started voting for her instead of her husband. This is why some of the I hate Nate posters have been vandalized and the N has been replaced by a K. In the end, Catherine was elected overseer. But she would not go quietly. Before being sent to the sacrificial chamber, Catherine used her authority as overseer to issue Order 7 Four, five, which abolished the election and instead replaced it with the computer's random number generator which would choose a random person every year to sacrifice. One might call it a lottery. Following this, in a desperate attempt to remain in control, the justice block attempted to seize power by force. The other blocks, however, resisted and this led to an all-out civil war. This resulted in the death of almost all the remaining vault dwellers except for five. These five survivors 
survivors decided to stop fighting. But not only that, they also decided to stop sacrificing each other. But when they refused to produce a sacrifice, instead of killing them all, the vault computer congratulated them on their selflessness. It turns out this was all a test, and they passed it. As a reward, the vault computer automatically opened the vault doors, making them free to leave. And then, well, you know the rest. Four of them committed suicide, and only one of them left. And that is the story of Vault 11. Thanks for watching. I just want to say, first of all, that I'm going to leave a link down below to uh, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery, which you can read. It's a very, very short story. It can be read in less than five minutes. I recommend this book to honestly everyone. It's such a classic. It talks about things like the dangers of crowd mentality, uh, the dangers of following traditions blindly without examining them, and it also talks about the dangers of following society blindly without you know, thinking about what you're doing, and uh, it's a very, very interesting read. Also, I just want to say, I'm going to leave a link down below to the vlog. Remember that part where you saw Josh Sawyer talk in the video? Josh Sawyer is the director of New Vegas. I'm going to leave a link down below to the vlog where he talks. It's actually quite a long video, but I recommend it to anyone who's interested in, like, game development, game design, and it's quite insightful. He actually has, like, a whole collection of videos. Also, by the way, I'm going to leave some notes down below in the description as to some things that I found interesting while making this video about Vault 11, but didn't bother to include in the video, since I didn't want to oversaturate the video with too much information so you guys can check it out and do some more reading if you want to and otherwise have a nice day and i'll see you guys next time peace